Okay, we're going to start with 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 20 and 21. It says, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babbling, and opposition of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. What the Lord is saying here is there are scientists out there who are not true scientists. They're false science is what it's saying. And believe me, there are many out there not true scientists. And what I mean by that is what I've been teaching. Scientists that say we've been here this long. Scientists say that we come from, from this animal, whatever. Those, that's what the Lord is talking about. Science falsely so called. And it says that there are some science out there who are saying, according to the words of God, we have made mistakes. The King James Bible is the only Bible that says science in these verses. You can, take, you can go to any other translation. Most other Bibles will translate the word science that it says right here in chapter, I mean in verse 20, where it says science. Most other translations will put the word knowledge there. They'll translate this verse to, this way. They'll say, avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. The word is a knowledge here. Men have put the word knowledge there. King James says science. He's talking about scientists. He's plainly saying scientists. And the reason, I, the only thing I can think of is the reason they don't put scientists there, or just science like it has here, is because they don't want to offend the scientists, I guess. The word is science. So we're talking about scientists. That's who the Lord is talking about here. That's why I like to read the King James because the, the, the Lord tells us who we need to be watchful for. We need to remember that the King James Bible is the only Bible that was inspired by the Holy Spirit. None of the translations are. Translations, like I said, are good. They're easy to understand. They're good if you're a baby Christian. But once you get on meat, once you become a mature Christian, King James is the only way to go. The King James is the only one that's going to fit the New Testament and the Old Testament like a glove. You can't do those with translations. Just like it says in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. All of it. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Paul's warning the Colossians, he's saying there's, in this verse, see to it that no one takes you captive through their philosophy. And that's what they do. Once they got you, once you, once, once you start listening to them, they got you. The Bible says, and forgive me, I forgot what verse it is, but he says not to listen to them. He says not to walk with them, not to stand with them, not to sit with them. And I'm sorry, I forgot the verse, but it's in there. But right here the Lord is saying, hey, once, once you start listening to them, they're going to have you. And right here Paul's warning us from that. Because all they have is empty deceptions. That's all they got. Deceptions. They don't, they're not going by the word of God. For those of you who don't believe we need the Old Testament teaching, let me give you some New Testament teaching then. Like I said, oh, if you got people out there that don't read the Old Testament, oh, that was just for back then, well, I'm, let me, if you believe that, well, let me read New Testament to you. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 39. All flesh is not the same flesh. Now, we're speaking about what scientists say. We all come from the same. It's the same molecules, atoms. We're all, they say we're all one. Animals and, and man are the same. That's what they say. Right here it says, All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men. There's a one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. So God is saying there's different flesh between men, beasts, fishes, birds. We're all different flesh. We're not, we're not, we don't come from the same. We're not made from the same, like I said, all those science terms they use. I, I don't know them all. I don't need to know them all. But I know what they say, that we're all the same. And right here it says, no, God's saying, no, we're all different. We're from different flesh. 
So they're trying to show they're trying to show we're all from the same I don't know genes, the same fossils. It's not true. Right here, this verse right here says we're all different. We're not like the animals, and the animals are not like us. Ephesians three nine, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ created all things. We've read it already in Galatians 1.16 that Jesus created all things. John 1.3 says Jesus made everything. The person who is most qualified to tell us where we're from, where we came from, is the one who made us, right? Mm -hmm. He's the most qualified, the one who created us. He's the one that's the most qualified to teach us where we're from and how long we've been here. Because I'm showing these verses right here. God created everything. When I say God, I can say Jesus because they're both the same. I mean, the verses say Jesus created everything. In the beginning, God created everything. But we know that God and Jesus is the same, right? So whether I say God or whether I say Jesus is the same. But God created everything. He knows exactly what's what. And if we're going to listen to anybody, we listen to the Creator. We listen to the Creator, not to the ones He's created. He's created man. So what are we going to do? We're going to listen to what He created or the Creator. Amen? Amen. I would listen to the Creator. Mark 10.6 But from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female, which we used this already. And it doesn't matter if God says it, like I said, or Jesus. It's the same. I've said it already, but I'm going to say it again. The verses above and the verses below show that the Lord is speaking about people. He's just not talking about male, female. It could be animal. No. He plainly shows that he's talking about people. So our eyes are open to that, right? Mm -hmm. Before I read the next verse, scientists talk about atoms and other chemical objects that are mixed together and how they hold everything together. Like I said, I don't know all these terms. So I might sound like a kindergartner when I'm talking about this stuff, but that's okay. I don't need to know all that. I don't want to know all that. Yeah. I just want to know what the Word of God says. Amen. And they make it sound complicated. You listen to them, believe me. You, 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 they sound like that because they don't want you to understand them. <laughs> they want to sound so intelligent. That, man, he must know what he's talking about. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't. Jesus says, not that complicated. And he says in Galatians 1.17 And he is before all things and he is who? Jesus. And by him, Jesus, all things consist. What Jesus is saying here is he holds all the universe together. He does. He holds everything together. For as Christians, we don't only depend on him for salvation. We depend on him to hold us together. Now, whether the lost people and the atheists, whether they know it or not, but they depend on the Lord. They have to, to hold us all together. It's not all this, like I said, all these terminologies, you know, atoms, molecules, all that stuff. It's not all that holds up. Now, the Lord might use that to hold us together, but He's the one that does it. And by Him, all things consist. All things hold together by Jesus. Period. If Jesus was to take away His power... His power, we'd be nothing but scattered dust. That's what we would be. We came from the ground, we'd go right back to the ground. We'll be back to being dust again. He holds us together. He does. Don't let scientists say, well, this and that, and that's why we, you know, everything holds together. No. It, right here, this verse says, by Him, all things are held together. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 1. Verses 2 and 3. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Again, Jesus made everything, and as we see here, he also made the worlds. There's two Greek definitions of the word world. Two Greek definitions. The first one is cosmos, which means order, arrangement. The other is aeon, Anon, however you want to pronounce it, which means an age or a period, a time, a time and space. 
this word, this this word space doesn't mean a vacuum either. Like scientists say, they talk about a vacuum. It's not speaking about a blank void out there. It means everything that is, everything uh, that is in space. I had someone tell me they're finding stores out there. They're just now finding these stores are so far away. They're just now finding them. Okay, so how can uh, you know how did God create the world in six days? If we're just now getting to some of those stores after all these thousands of years, who made time? God made time. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is not held to time like we are. We're held with time. We're we're uh, we're limited. We're trapped in time. We got hours. We got God said it. And I don't care if it's 100 billion, zillion light years away. <laughs> they didn't say it's that many, but it's almost <laughs> like that. Uh, when God said it, it was there. Amen. It didn't take that long to put that star out there. God said it, and it was there. He is not trapped in our time. I hope you all understand that. Mm-hmm. And some of these guys are say to be Christians. Yeah. And I done proved here. I done proved you. You cannot be that kind of scientists and say you're a Christian because like I say over and over Amos 3.3 3, God said unless we're in agreement unless we walk together we can't be together right. you know this is called faith this is what called we live by faith right mm-hmm. we don't live by what we can see can you see God no. no we can't see God but we have faith there's a God just like we have faith, there is a God, we have, we have faith in His words. Like I said, Jesus, God just spoke it, and it was there. I don't care how far it is. Verse 3. Who, being the brightness of His glory, and the express image of His person, and upholding all things by the word of His power, when He had by Himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of, of the majesty on high. The who... We know who the who is. It's Jesus. He is the brightness of His glory. Jesus is glory. He is the brightness. He is the light. John 1.7 says, The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. The glow. That light is the glow. That all men through Him might believe. John 8.12 Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. I am the glow of the world. So another way you can read that. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have light, the light of life. We who proclaim to be Christians, we also have this glow. Ain't that right, Jody? We have this glow. That's why we're not the light, but he says we're, we're the light of the world. We're the little lights. So little lights mean what? Little glows. We glow. It doesn't actually mean we're a light bulb. We're not a light bulb. <laughs> we glow. That's what the word light means. You're not going very much, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're a glow. When we're walking with the Lord, we're glowing. Whether you know it or not, you are glo- we are glowing. We have to glow. If we're living in a dark world and we're in the light, we can't help but glow. Right. <laughs> now, if you're not glowing, what does that tell you? Or to check yourself out. Matthews 5.14 Ye are the light of the world. A city that, that is set on the hill cannot be hid. If we're glowing, people will see us. No ifs, ands, or buts. People will see us because we live in a dark world. This world is full of darkness. If we're glowing, people will, will see We cannot be hid. Now you ask yourself, am I living that kind of life? Am, am I glowing? I mean, this is for you to ask yourself. This is the scriptures I'm reading, right? Mm-hmm. It's getting hard to find this glow in this world. I mean, if you sit back and, and you think, okay, who do I know that's glowing? I don't think there's very many people that you're gonna, you can point out. There's not much glow out there. Jesus is the exact, exact image of God. It says that Jesus is holding all things by the power of His Word. Do we believe that? 
I mean, we can believe scientists and say, well, everything's held together because of this, because of that, blah, blah, blah. But right here, we just said, by the Word of God, by His Word, everything is held together. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 11.3 Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Can I prove to you by the Scriptures no, I can't prove how God did this. All I know is He spoke it. And that's probably all He did. You know, that's all I know. Don't need, don't need to know how He did it. I really don't need to know how He did it. He said He did it, I believe it. Period. That's it. He don't have to explain to me how He did it. Am I asking Him, well, how are you God? I mean, who made you? And I'm sure you got people who, ask, who question that. That's how come they're like, have a hard time believing in God because... Well, who made God? Well, all I know is there is a God, and I believe in Him. Amen. It's, I mean, that's it. The problem for philosophers and scientists is that they have been for years investigating, speculating, comparing notes together. Like I said before, to find that missing link. All their theories, they, 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 they get them together to find the missing, the missing link. They're no more closer to finding that missing link than they were hundreds and hundreds of years ago. They're not going to find it. There is no missing link. Right. But men, they want to believe there is a missing link. That link will show you how men and animals are the same. Well, like I said, that scientist that I read about last week, he never found it and he gave up. And he, he said, we're wasting our time. And they are. Now you have another scientist, uh, Burrad Russell, I believe his, his name was. He's a philosopher who, sp who spent 90 years searching for the link. And then he, he admitted at the end of his life, he admitted that philosophy of these things was a washout. I mean, he, he sounded just like Eldridge. Well, this guy's just like Eldridge. He gave up. They were never found it, but he, him also, he died still not accepting that God made everything. But he searched for 90 years to try to find this missing link. Wasted. Wasted life. That's all that is. was a wasted life. Anytime you're trying to prove God is wrong in something or the Bible is wrong, you're wasting your life. The devil's got you right where he wants you, just wasting your life. Even today's theories are still multiplying. They're still out there. And they're still not going anywhere. They're still not finding the, the secret to evolution. You know, how did all this happen? You know, why are they doing that? Well, I know why. Because they're listening to the devil. Again, I say, born-again Christians believe by faith. We just believe by faith. You don't have to prove it to us. Prove to me that there's a God to heaven. No, you don't have to. I believe it. Right. I just choose to believe it. I choose to put my faith that there is a God in heaven. I choose that. And if, and I'm not, I'm not, I am not. But if I am wrong, praise God, He's given me a good life anyway. Amen. I've lived a good life thinking there is a God. If it's not true. I'm not saying... It might not be true. Please understand. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying, if there is, I'm having a good life just believing there's a God. Amen? Amen. I am. The most br brilliant thinkers in this world cannot discover how all this came about. Thinkers. I call them thinkers. I call them brilliant because that's the way people look at them. Because they can prove this and prove that by paper, like I said last week. But they can't prove it out there by creation. All they are is brilliant thinkers that are going to waste. Again, like I said, just going to waste. Jeremiah 51, 15. The Lord made the earth by His power and He preserved it by His wisdom. With His own understanding, He stretches out the heaven. God is the only one who can understand how He made the heavens on the earth. By His own understanding. Did He say, that we were going to understand? No. no, God says right here, by His own understanding, He stretches out the heaven. Those stars, like I said, that are a million light years away, 
He understands this is a good verse. Yeah. Let me say this. The words of God are not going, they're not always going to please you. But I give them to you anyway. You know me. I'm going to give you the word of God. In Titus chapter 1, it says, Men who are called to be bishops, that's speaking about a pastor or, or, or teachers, the Lord gave gifts. And one of them is being a pastor. In fact, Ephesians 4.11, it says, And he gave, talking about gifts, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. That's who he's giving these gifts to. <clears throat> the Lord gave us these respons responsibilities to study his word, and to teach his word. And we can stop gain sayers. What is exactly what it's saying. They say things to gain for themselves. Okay, that's what it means. Now, most pastors and teachers, seriously. Well, Jesse, what gives you the right to say what you're going to say? The word of God. Most pastors or most teachers are not qualified to teach or to preach. I see it over and over. I see it. I hear it. I hear teachers, and I'm, I'm, I'm not bragging, but I know a little bit about the Word of God. I know a little bit about the Scriptures. And when they, the things they say, I'm like, they've heard that from another man. I know that ain't come from the Holy Spirit. I know they, they said something that another man said. And a lot of times, they'll teach from a book that a man wrote. I've seen it and I've heard it. They teach from reading commentaries. I have commentaries in there, but that's not what I rely on giving me what, I, what the Lord wants to give me. I read them just to see, okay, how's that fit with what the Lord showed me? You know, are we on the same boat here? And sometimes we are and sometimes we're not. But I can guarantee you this. I'll go over the Bible before I go over any man. And if I don't understand a verse... I'm not going to bring it. I'm not going to give it to you. If the Lord hasn't showed me what that verse means, Jesse, zip it up. I'm not going to bring it to you. I'm not going to act like I know if I don't know. Or I'm, I'm not going to go to that comment. I, I don't know. I'm not going to go to that commentary. Okay, well, this is what he says, so that's what I'm going to tell them. Amen? I'm not. I'm not. You can be secure on that. I'm going to teach you what the Bible says. If it's not from the Bible, I'm not going to teach it to you. But there are a lot of preachers and teachers out there, especially teachers, oh my gosh, teachers who are babies. I've been in churches where they've put them in the teaching position. I've seen it, that's why I can say this. You have many teachers out there, out there who are baby Christians and cannot, are not qualified to teach. Because the Bible says a teacher, preacher should not be young. And I'm not talking about age, it's talking about young in your walk with the Lord. But I'm not going to. But I do have a teaching on it. So if anybody wants to hear it, it's called qualifications for preaching. If someone doesn't believe what I'm saying, listen to that teaching. We don't need teachers who are going to teach what other men say. We need teachers who are going to teach the Bible. These these gang sayers are putting questions in people's minds. Many of them are stopping believers from the words of God, because, like I said, they. They can say, well, if you do this and you do that, and like I said, they showed on paper, well, it's got a Christian, well, that makes sense. Well, they can do that. That's why they're called gainsayers. They're trying to get you away from the Lord onto themselves. Look, I know. They're just, they're just promoting themselves. And there's religious people in the church that are gainsayers. They want you to, to follow them, not the Lord, them. If they can get you, it's just like a cult. If they can get you, you're going to follow them. They can just about say anything they want, you're going to believe it. That's what, that's what, I mean, don't, um, don't watch it, but watch TV. I mean, look, look, you can see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people listening to a man who is a wolf. The wolves are out there. It says to flee from them. It says to stay away from them. I don't have to be a scientist or a philosopher to prove they're wrong. I don't have to prove they're wrong. Well, that 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 don't go together. Or no, that doesn't. No, I don't have to do that. I don't have to do that. All I have to do is read the Bible. That's it. Now they can believe me, or they can just keep on believing what they 
for themselves. Masters of their own mind just about. They have no faith. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 22. Let's talk about the flood. Verse 1, it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. Now believe it or not, but there are some teachers who teach that sons of God's right here in this verse means fallen angels. And that's why I did a teaching on it. I don't know if y'all remember, it's been a while back, but it's called Who Are Sons of God? That's the title of it. And I'll talk about this verse. And in verse 5 it says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now these men we see here took them wives, which they chose, not the Lord. It says right here, they chose. God didn't choose these wives for them. They chose them. But right here we can see these, are, these men are not walking with the Lord. Verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now this word repented does, is not the same meaning that we use. We use the word repent, that means to turn from your sins. The rip, it repented the Lord here, that's, that's not what it means. i give you an example. If I have to, when, I, when my daughters were young, if I had to spank one of them, I mean, my daughters, they're, you know, they're the apple of my eye. It's hard to spank them. But I knew I had to, and it repented me to do it. I didn't turn from it. It repented. It, 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 this other word right here, grieve, is pretty close to it. It grieved me to do that. And this is what the Lord is saying right here. It grieved the Lord that He had made man because of the way we turned out. In verse 7, And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. It didn't say here he was going to destroy the fallen angels. How those teachers can say these were fallen angels, because he, he plainly says it. I mean, you read the verses. He's talking about a man. He's talking about men here. Verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Now God has always given us grace for those who want it. It had to be grace because none of us deserve it, right? None of us deserve grace. God gives it to us. It's up to us if we receive it. Noah, he found grace in Noah. Verse 11, it says, The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. <laughs> this is exactly what's going on today. This earth is filled with violence. Now, listen to as I'm reading this, and then when I get to the end, you'll see what I'm talking about. But just like here, the earth is filled with violence today, just like it was back then, in the time, in the time of Noah. Verse 12, And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. God saw that men were saying, Killing babies, that's okay. God saw that men were with men. Men said that was okay. Women with women. Men said that was okay. And so on and so on. We see it today. There's almost, according to men, I don't know what sin is. Yeah. Everything's okay with men. Just like it was back in Noah. Same thing. They believe that nothing's wrong. Compare what we're reading about Noah to what's going on today. Compare it. Verse 13. And God said unto Noah, Then of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, and room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. So he's telling Noah to build an ark. And let's go down to 17. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh wherein the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Now first of all, God tells Noah to build a boat and that there's going to be a flood on the earth with water. And he did it. And like I've taught before, Noah built a boat. Noah could have very easily have said, 
what is a boat? They had no water. They had no oceans. Like I said, the Bible says everything, plants, everything grew by the mist from the, from the ground, by the dew of the day. But he, he believed God, so he built a boat. Don't know what a boat is, but I'll build it. I don't know what a flood is, but I guess it's coming because he said it. Now, do we walk like Noah? Are we like Noah? God said it, and we said, okay. Even though we don't understand it, and believe me, it's a lot of times it's that way. Lord, I don't know why you want me to do this, but you said do it. I'm going to do it. It don't make sense to me. But if you said to do it, then I want to do it. I want to be in your will. Amen. Now this is the reason the Lord saved Noah and his family. Because he obeyed God. He obeyed God. God told him to do this and he did it. And his family. Why did he save his family also? Because Noah was the head of the house. Noah was the head of the house. Noah knew what God wanted from the head of the house. They had the scriptures back then. God had already explained. He, he ex had already explained all this stuff all the way back to Adam. They already knew about sacrifices, offerings. Way back with Adam, Cain, and they, they knew all God's rule, rules back then. They don't say it in the Bible. And he taught them this. and No, no. They knew it. That's how come they did it. Well, same thing with Noah. Noah said, hey, I'm the head of this family. And he, he, he uh, had his boys grow up in the Lord. Just like uh, in Job. Job chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Job talked about his family and how he, he made them do this. Because he was in the head of the house. He led them spiritually. That's why it's so important for the man to understand that he is the head of the house. Spiritually. Spiritually. He's the head of the house uh, in other ways. But he is not the boss where he just tells the wife what to do and she does it whether she likes it or not. Like I said, a wife submits to her husband when he's walking with the Lord. If the husband says, hey, uh, we're kind of low on money, how won't you go still a little bit from where you're working? You can submit to him by saying, I love you, but that's against God's will. That's against God. I'm not going to do it. That's what wives do. But if you have a husband that's a man of God, listen to him. Submit to him. That's what God said. But also at the same time, men, you better be walking with the Lord. Don't lead your wife in the wrong direction. Or your children. Verse 18. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou, thy sons, thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. Now, I've, got, I've already taught on the covenant and what it means. And, you know, you give your life to the Lord and the Lord gives you everything He has. He takes care of us. Amen? So we know what covenant means. Amen. On, amen on covenant. In verse 19. And every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female. Now the purpose, the purpose of the ark was to keep them alive. Noah, his family, and the animals. Most people look at the flood as death. That, it, that God killed everything. Well, yeah, he killed everything that didn't walk with him. But those who did walk with him, he saved. And he saved the animals because he was going to start over again with Noah and his family. And they needed to have animals to eat. After the, Noah, after the flood, remember, man started to eat meat. Before the flood, they just ate vegetables, greens. I've already taught that, so I'm not going to go into that. Verse 20, Of fowls after their kind, of cattle after their kind, and every creeping thing of earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. Now, it doesn't say anywhere that Noah and his sons had to go get these animals. Just like the winds, the seas, the rocks, they obey God. Do you think he's going to have trouble getting animals on that ark? God tells animals, go, they're going to go. He tells the winds what to pick up or to die, they pick up or they die. God commands everything, everything. He created everything. People need to understand that. He told them to go and they went into the ark. Noah and his sons did not have to go, have, did not have to go and catch them. 
you might be wondering why didn't animals fight and eat, eat each other well like I said before the flood it hasn't flooded yet they ate greens verse 21 and take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten and thou shalt gather it to thee and it shall be for food for thee and for them thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him so he did can any of us and don't answer, don't say nothing don't raise your hands right, but can any of us in here say we're like Noah God said do it and and he did it without question he just did it without question that's walking with the Lord this is a man of God he did all that God told him to do amen, amen. we need those kind of men today and we have them but they're very few <clears throat> Genesis 7.16 And they that went in, went in male and female of all flesh, as God had commanded him, and the Lord shut him in. God told Noah and his family to go into the ark, and they obeyed. Amen? Amen. I mean, he told them to do all this other stuff. Now he's telling them, okay, get in the ark. And they obeyed. And then God, it says, and the Lord shut the door. The Lord shut the door. Did Noah shut the door? No. Did his son shut the door? It says right here, the Lord shut the door. This is the picture of the rapture. God is going to call all his believers to meet him in the sky. And then he's going to shut the door. This is it. The rapture, all the believers, everybody else that's on earth. That's it. You're in the flood. Now, when we get into the tribulation, it's come, then the Lord is saying, okay, you didn't make it here, but tribulation period, the tribulation, in the tribulation, it's going to be real easy. The first three and a half years, like I've talked before, it teaches that there's going to be a false peace. It's going to be peace, but it's going to be a false peace. And then the second three and a half years is going to get worse and worse. Well, when it started raining, just raining. I mean, those people are like, we're talking about the flood again. Those people are like, oh, this is nice. You know, rain is falling on you and everything. It seems real nice and everything. It's going good. Then it just keeps on raining. It keeps on raining. And before you know it, there's no land for them to stand on. You get in the picture? So, I mean, they go together. The rapture and the tribulation. The tribulation talks about three and a half years of peace. That's what these guys were thinking. Rain. Oh, this is nice. It's cool. I mean, look. They learned how to swim, I guess. You know, everything was nice. And then it just kept on raining. Now there's no land to stand on. The next thing you know, they're, they're drowning. They're dying. Same thing with tribulation. Same thing. It gets worse and worse. The Bible says it's like a, a woman uh, in labor. At first it's just a little pain here, a little pain. Then the pain gets worse, worse, and worse. The Lord said that's the way the tribulation is going to be. It's going to be easy at first, and then it's just going to get worse and worse. So that's the way it happened back over there. And this is the way it's going to happen in the tribulation. The rapture, like I said, the same thing. God's going to shut the door. Okay, I've got all the believers with me up here in the sky. He shuts the door. Just like he did on the ark. Genesis chapter 7 verses 19 through 22. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth. And all the high hills that were under the whole heaven were covered. Fifteen cubits upward did the water prevail. And the mountains were covered, which is talking about about 20 feet high, above the mountains, the water. <clears throat> and all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both of fowl, of cattle, and of beasts, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, and every man. All whose nostrils were the breath of life, of all that was in the dry land, died. So all the animals and all the men that were on the dry land, that was not in the boat, died they all died and i gave you all that like that's a y'all see that picture y'all got the picture i gave you all that now i'm gonna go to the new testament compare it to the day second peter chapter 3 verses 1 through 7 then i'm gonna read verse 13 this second epistle beloved i now write unto you in both which i stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and 
of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Peter is saying he wants to revive us, to revive us in our mind, to remember what, what has happened through the prophets and the apostles back then, the men who followed the Lord. He says, I want you, I want you to remember that. He wants us to remember the Old Testament and the New Testament, he says. Verse 13, uh, verse 3, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. When Peter, What Peter is saying here is that there's going to be philosophers who are going to say, Hey, what happened about this promise of Jesus coming back? Where's he at? Y'all been saying that for years. Now he's going to say there's people out there that are going to do that. He said, well, where's he at? Also, uh, that the world's still evolving, evolving from from like the beginning, which we've already I've already showed you that that God said he was finished. These scientists that are they're called scoffers, meaning men who have their own opinion on how things came about. Okay, and verse five says, for this. For this they willingly, willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the waters. Now what this is referring back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 where it said, where God said that the, the atmosphere was going to divide the waters above from the waters below. That's what this is referring to. Verse 6, whereby the world that then was being being overflowed with water, perished. Now remember, I told you that the word "world," what it means, it means order. I'm not talking about the earth, the the dirt. It's talk, when he it says "world," it's talking about order, God's order. The reason I show you this is God. God didn't destroy the earth; He destroyed the animal and the people. Did He destroy the earth and the domino? No, He just destroyed the animals and the people. The order back then was to live for the Lord. That was the order. That was God's order. But people didn't want to do that. So he destroyed He destroyed them with water. We're going to see that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. I mean, this right here, what I'm teaching right now, ought to perk us a little bit. Uh, you know, we don't know when he's coming, but these verses kind of scared you, you know. Just, I mean, we're doing exactly what they did back then. Exactly. Verse 7, But the heavens and the earth which are now, by the same word, are, are kept in store, reserved on to fire against the day of judgment and peti the petition of ungodly men. Peter saying that the new order that we have today is still the same order that was back then. The order back then was to live for the Lord. That was the O, but it's still here today. Walk with the Lord. But this time, this time, if you don't, he, what did he do back then in Noah? The flood. But this time it says, it will be by fire. Remember what it said in Genesis 6, 6 11, the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. The earth was filled with, where is there no violence at? Tell me of a place in, on this world that there's no violence. Everybody's got, every country has trouble. Every country has to watch out for terrorists. Every country, there's no country out there that is safe. That's why he brought the flood and things are the same today. Listen, I mean, I'm just, I'm reading the scriptures, right? Mm -hmm. Is there any difference? They were drinking and partying and, and have, eating and drinking. You know, what was one with eating and drinking? Well... <clears throat> they weren't eating, drinking to the Lord. They weren't just staying at home. That word, when he's talking about that, he's talking about their partying. They were just partying. Had no concern whatsoever about the Lord. Had no concern whatsoever about Him coming. Is it like that today? How many people are really concerned about the Lord coming? None. Well, I say none, but it's almost like none. Like I said, well, not Lord, like I said, but the Lord said, Broad is the gate that's going to hell. Broad. Narrow is the gate that's going to heaven. So, listen. 
Very few people are, are concerned about the Lord's coming. Very few. Verse 13. Drop down to verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. We, thought, we hear people talking about the world coming to an end. Well, it is for them. Because the Lord is going to have a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Amen. He is. He's going to have a new heaven. And for those who are like in the time of Noah. Noah and his family. They obeyed. They were righteous people. Same thing now. Those of us who obey the Lord. Who live for the Lord. We're going to be on the boat. But this time it's not going to be a boat. He's, we're going to be saved from the fire. That's what it said. I just read it. We're going to be saved from the fire. For the, for the Christians, we have a new physical earth coming. Not only do we have a new physical earth coming, but guess who's going to be in that new physical earth that's coming? <laughs> Amen? Amen? We're going to see Jesus face to face. Amen. Not only will we be able to see Him spiritually like we do now, we can see Jesus spiritually with our spiritual eyes, but then we're going to be able to see Him physically. Oh, God. I hope my heart can take it. I'm sure He's going to take care of it, but... Whew. So these verses show us we have men who will try to turn us from the Lord. We're mainly scientists. Uh, no, the earth has been here longer than that. No, uh, you didn't come from the dirt. You came from that. No. God's telling us right here in these verses they're going to have men. They're called scoffers who are going to try to tell you these things. To take you away from your faith. That's what he's saying. So this whole teaching is to show you don't listen to these people. They're scientists. Scientists are known as being very intelligent. Right? Well, they're not. They have no wisdom whatsoever. Not of God anyway. So the Lord, Peter right here is telling us to remember this. Remember what happened back in the Old Testament. He's saying, remember what happened back there. He wants us to beware of the scoffers who are going against God's words. And they'll, they'll like I said, they'll say things like, Prove to me there's a God. Prove to me that Jesus is coming because y'all been saying that from since He died on the cross. They've been saying it. So they're going to throw everything at you to show you, prove it to me. All we have to do is tell them, listen, my faith, my faith, I believe in God. And I believe everything He says. Everything. If you don't want to do that, believe what you want. This is what I choose. We all have a choice. You have a choice. I have a choice. I'm choosing to believe in God. I'm choosing to have faith in all of His words. All of them. This is why it says in verse 5 that they are ignorant. That's what He calls them. These scientists, these scoffers, they're ignorant. We're not. Amen? Amen. So when you have someone coming up to you, a scientist or any, a scoffer, anybody who's going against the Word of God, remember this teaching. Remember this teaching. Remember God's words. So they won't deceive you. God is teaching you in this teaching, hey, there are men out there, don't listen to them. I, I know we're going to say, well, I believe in the Lord. But believe me, if you're weak, if you're a weak Christian, these scientists, these philosophers, these scoffers, they got a good chance of taking you. You need to be strong, walking in the Word of God. Strong. You need to be a mature Christian. Your baby, baby Christians are easy for wolves to get to. So us in this room, the Lord has shown us what scientists say and what God says. Amen?